Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. Today we're going to make a part four for Wayside Technology Group. Uh, we're going to look at the holders. We're going to look at the insiders. We're going to look over their most recent an our earnings report and then determine if we want to tweak these numbers a little bit. I know we uh, some people may look at this as, oh, you're just throwing some blind assumptions in. Like, how much conviction do you have into that? That's why we're going to go, uh, since we are getting kind of close to these high assumptions, we're going to go touch base on their most recent earnings report and see if we want to tweak these numbers a little bit. But first, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. So next thing I'm going to say, this is a 10-year analysis. The odds of having these numbers directly on point is very unlikely. My job is to be conservative and bacon as much margin and safety as possible. That's what we're here. I'm here to preach uh, to newer investors how to be conservative and and bake in margin of safety. So getting into this video, here I have Wayside Technology Group pulled up. <coughs> Excuse me. So first thing I noticed, low volume. So uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I normally uh, am more interested in higher volume stocks, but if the value is there, I mean, it's going to attract me to the stock. So first we're gonna go over the holders. Top mutual fund holders, and sure enough, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. I'm a holder in this company without even realizing it. So let's say I'm completely wrong in this analysis and I never end up filling a position in this company. And we run up, let's go back uh, over here, let's put our FIB tool back in, and let's say we get this full extension that we talked about in the previous video. I'm still going to benefit. <clears throat> Even though I missed out on this massive run right here, I'm still going to benefit because of VT. Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, I buy the entire world's economy when I cost average into this ETF. So, yeah, I, I find that very interesting that I, I had no idea that I was a holder of this company before I did my analysis in it. That is the beauty of VT. So next, we're going to look at the trend insider transactions. Now, I can see they have a couple purchases here, have some sales recently in the early June at that higher 36. Um, purchase at 32, which is right around where the stock price currently is at. We have another sell. We have a couple purchases in right here, nothing too big. And now as we're getting into these lower 20s, <clears throat> I can see more purchases. Where do I like the value of the stock? I'm getting more attracted to the stock price at, at that level. So is it interesting that insiders are picking up shares at that level? I find that interesting. Now they're not very big buys, but in the end, a buy is a buy. And here we are, as I scroll down, lower 20s, more insider buying. Do I like the value of the company here? Yes, I do. Now, we do have some sales, but remember, this is back in 2020. What was the valuation of this company back in 2020? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, these were good buys right here. Even though it's a small buy, look at the, look at the purchases. These insiders are getting good value on these shares that they bought. So I find that interesting. I think it's important to look at the insider transactions for a company. So lastly, what we're going to do, we're going to touch base on the earnings report and see if we want to tweak these numbers a little bit. I'll zoom in for these numbers. I did get some feedback that I need to zoom in more on my videos. So that was really good feedback because I, uh, I could see how that could have been an issue. But here we have Wayside Technology Group report second quarter earnings. We're going to touch base on this. Now, first thing I see, net income up 56%. Fifth consecutive quarter of double-digit profitability improvements. So, a company that I'm interested, I take that as a big positive that they're consistently increasing their profitability. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's just scroll down to the income statement. I don't want to take too much time on this. Uh, nope, that's the balance sheet. Uh, a statement of earnings. That's an interesting way of putting it. This is basically an uh, income statement right here. So net sales, 
2021. Okay, so I can see they decreased in revenue for, by almost eight million. So looking back at my assumptions, revenue growth. My jobs be conservative. This is a 10 year analysis. Am I extremely worried that they decreased in revenue like that? It is alarming. It's something that we can monitor, but I'm looking at a 10 year analysis. Is it possible that 2021, the year we printed stimulus checks, everyone had money to spend, a lot of companies benefited, is it possible that they had tough 2021 comparable sales? It is possible. But next thing I'm going to focus on, and we, we might tweak these numbers, I'm going to look at the profit margins that they had. Because it said they were more profitable, we're going to look more into that right here. Um, oh, next thing I see right here, cost of goods sold. So even though their revenue declined, look at the cost of goods sold. Their cost of goods sold declined. This this is actually, I take this as a big positive, and I understand why they're more profitable now. Uh, especially in the year 2022 when we've had... Uh, these rate hikes and high inflation, a lot of companies' cost of goods sold are actually going up. So I take this as a big positive right there. And yeah, looking at this, I may be more inclined to look at the profit margin. So let's go look at the net income. Yeah, that's a nice increase in net income right there. So we are going to pull up a calculator. Oops. Now I can see I... To calculate the profit margin, I'm going to take the net income, 2791, divided by the net sales, 67863. Hit uh, equal, okay, so 4.1% profit margin. So going back to my analysis, do I need to tweak these numbers at all? Now, over the last five quarters, they've consistently increased their profitability. Is that going to continue going forward? I don't know, but based off of that, I'm going to tweak these profit margins a little bit. And we're going to up them to 3, 3.5, and 4. 3, 3.5, and 4. Now, with that being said, their revenue did decrease, so I'm going to add a little margin of safety in right there. And we're going to go 0, 2, and 4. Now, for a lower revenue growth, I'm going to pay a lower P.E. ratio. 8, 12, or 8, 10, 12, sorry. 8, 10, 12, 15% return. I still want that 15% return. And we're going to hit generate here, and we're going to see. Okay, so that did actually increase where I'm interested in the stock. We're currently sitting at $31, roughly. I'm interested in this at 28. I'm going to dive deeper into this at around 28 and figure out as much about the company as I possibly can. But for the sake of the watch list, we are going to add this $20.09 to the watch list. Notify me when we get below that price. And boom, just like that, we're in the, we're in the watch list. So that's going to notify me. Now, one thing about this middle assumption, 20 flat. Multiple five, a baseline number. I like that. Also, touching base on the insiders. Insiders are also interested in the stock down here. And from my charting perspective in the previous video, I can see we have this screaming gap right here at $21. Do I like the value of the company there? Yes, if we were to get some price action down there, I may be interested in starting a small position in this stock. But let's not forget, I am already a holder of this company in my VT, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. Uh, yeah, I, I like the value right here. If we get some price action down here, it's definitely going to be worth diving deeper into. Uh, that is going to complete the part four video for Wayside Technology Group. I hope you guys like the content, and we'll see you on the next video.